Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Gonna come at you with another questioning, another thinking section of scripture. And it, I'm not going to stay exclusively in scripture this time. I'm gonna bring it to something relatable, at least on some level, to modern day stuff. Okay, it's not that relatable to the majority of us. It's a very specific and unique situation, but it does come into today's modern landscape to an extent not here in America, but abroad, particularly on missionary fields. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. It's 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 3. Now keep in mind, um, as I'm reading this, that Absalom, the, David kept ten concubines in his house to maintain it when he and all of his guys fled when Absalom took over. So those ten were the ones that Ahithophel told Absalom to sleep with when he wanted to show everyone there's a bug right there, <laughs> that, <clears throat> that him and David were not getting along, that he was taking over in place of David, and that the two weren't on good terms at all anymore. So Absalom slept with those ten concubines. So now, 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 3. Now David came to his house at Jerusalem. He's returned, he's king once again, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in seclusion and supported them, but did not go into them. In other words, he didn't have sex with them. So they were shut up to the day of their death, living in widowhood. So that I just wanted to include the Absalom story to like, you know, why in the world would David just like, okay, you ten, thanks for keeping the house for me while I was gone. Now um, I'm not going to be with you for the rest of your physical lives or mine. And that, that would seem incredibly ridiculous if you didn't know the backstory there. And so the, the first question for back then, you know, again, it's kind of like yesterday, the way David handled Ziba and Mephibosheth, is that correct? Is the way he handled those ten concubines correct? He obviously, uh, they really didn't have a choice. Um, Absalom and his men came in, and as rapey and as horrible as it sounds, so when he went into the house and he was like, okay, we're going to have sex in front of all of Israel, you know, you're first, come over here. Considering he had soldiers around, I'm guessing they really didn't have much of a choice in the matter. Was it right for David to be like, nope, not going to touch you again for the rest of your life? My thought is, as far as on David's side, because they not only, re not only had another man slept with them, but it was in conjunction with the rebellion against him. There were personal, there was, I, my hand wasn't showing up on camera, there were personal and political reasons to not have sex with them anymore. So, kind of an interesting situation. And the way it brings comes into the modern day, this is a very specific missiological problem. It doesn't go to everywhere in the world. But nowadays, polygamy does exist in other countries. It is a thing. And sometimes, when Christian missionaries go over to these countries and tell the people about Jesus, and they're like, yeah, we like that. We want Jesus. And they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior because the New Testament very strongly talks about the leadership of the church specifically bishops and deacons only having one wife and of course you know in our american culture where these missionaries come from we only have one wife the question becomes well, what should men do when they have multiple wives and in the past one of the answers was you should divorce those wives well when those wives were divorced that and they were cut off from the household they no longer had a home they no longer had an income they couldn't provide for themselves and all, and a lot of the times they turned to prostitution in order to simply get money to live, to eat, to get shelter and clothes. And obviously that is a very horrible thing. We Christians don't like that one bit. That's very, very bad. And what some missionaries have done is said, for those of those who are married, just keep all of your wives. You know, you, you married before you came to Jesus. This, the culture that you were brought up in was prior to Christianity, keep all of your wives and make sure they're all provided and taken care of. You know, what? what's the solution there? What is an answer there? Again, it's been handled in two different ways, and I'm not sure, you know, d does he simply have sex with all of the wives and not assume a, sh a mantle of leadership in the church? Um, does he choose only one wife that he has sex with and then he can become a leader of the church? I don't know. I actually, I know the former details that I mentioned. Those are the two ways that this, that polygamy has been handled. I never heard like specific people, specific stories and specific names. I only heard the topic in those two resolutions. I didn't hear like the ones, that, the one that I just thought of, you know, what about those particular scenarios? How should that work? 
So again, I just I want to spark creativity. I want to spark thought. I want to show that the world isn't completely black and white and that we actually need to use our brains and think about things and social and political and cultural issues. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is supposed to be typing. And thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.